Welcome to an exciting new category on our channel. We are thrilled to introduce the Spotlight feature to you, a series where we focus on individual important elements of our products. These videos dive deeper into details and Spotlight features that often stay in the background. In contrast to our regular quick tips, here we cast a spotlight on the exceptional features of the Janus products. Stay interested, there is much to discover. And the first topic will be the new cutting data view in our tool management, the Technology Manager. Let's see how it has developed and how it makes your work even easier. My name is Heinrich Flaum, and I sincerely hope you enjoy watching today's video. But let's first take a look at what the old cutting data view looked like. So when I'm moving here in TMGR, for instance, quickly looking for a tool like this 8mm end mill, I can already see that for the material group N, like aluminum, brass, or other non-ferrous metals, cutting data is already set up. If I double-click on this tool in this section, I then have the option to unlock it, allowing me to make the necessary edits. In the Cutting Data tab, I can set up the proper and corresponding cutting data for various material parts. Up until now, I've observed that for aluminum, there's a surface speed set to 220 meters and also a feed per tooth of 0.16 millimeters per tooth configured. And now I would say, I want to set a new surface speed for this milling cutter. How do I do this? First, I click here on plus and say, I'm looking for a certain part material. The chosen part material should be free cutting steel, for example. Now, Set a surface speed of 120 meters and a feed per tooth of around 1.2 tenths. If you want, you can also choose to attach a method right here as well. These values are specifically set aside for either the roughing phase or solely for finishing use. Let's find a method then. Basically, I want to use these values for roughing now. Confirm. And then I have now assigned these specific values for handling tool steel for the roughing method with this tool. In the situation where I want to also perform finishing with this tool, I should go ahead and click on the plus symbol once more. And then proceed to select the appropriate material once again. So again, the free cutting steel. And here again, specify the surface speed. For example, 80 meters and a feed per tooth of 0.06. Not to forget that I also offer a new method here, for example, in my case, finishing. I confirm with OK. And I have now successfully established cutting data for this specific tool once more. If I click on save at this point and conclude editing by using the lock icon, I will also be able to discover in which assembly tool this specific cutter is installed. Let me do this quickly. Then I can see that all these assembly tools include the 8mm end mill and it is also incorporated in this assembly tool, for instance. I can definitely see there's a section here called cutting data. When I click in here once, I see that the cutting data from my single tool, that is from the 8mm end mill, have been transferred into the assembly tool. What can I do here in this situation? I can now proceed to unlock it once more and also make changes to the cutting data for the assembly tool once again. For example, I determine, okay, the cutter for free cutting steel has an ideal surface speed of 120 and 1.2 tenths for feed rate during roughing. But in the configuration of this setup, you see the tool is extended quite a bit. These 120 would be a bit too fast. Hence, I can now move forward to assign a completely new set of cutting data to the assembly tool once again, concentrating specifically on the same type of material. As utilized before. So in this setup, Considering the specific length, I don't necessarily want to drive at 120, preferring a bit less. Then I am able to enter the values here once again as needed and also append the method once more, for instance, for the process to roughing. So, when later on the cutting data is transmitted over to NX, the cutting data set coming from the assembly tool is given precedence and priority over the cutting data set that originates from the base tool. All right, that was it for now for this one tool with the old view of the cutting data. Let's take another look at the whole thing with the new one. Let's take another look at it again with the updated cutting data view. For that, I'm going to once again grab the tool we just created with the old cutting data method, double click on it. Open the lock here as well so I can work on it and go straight into the editing data tab. And there you can already see the very first quite significant difference. 
we have now prioritized the use of materials in the cutting data section. So if we want to create multiple cutting data methods for a material, for example, aluminum, they will be listed here accordingly. The same applies to the free cutting steel, which we just set up in the old methodology or rather in the old view. There, we can already observe that for the free cutting steel, we have several methods already available, without a method, so to speak. A, general or generic. Cutting data set, but also for roughing and here also for finishing down. So how do you proceed here if you want to create a new material? Basically, you say I want to create a new material with the plus, for example, brass. Then I continue on to the next step and say that I would really like new cutting data sets for brass to be included. Brass comes up here again. I'll set the surface speed to 150 and the feed per tooth to let's say 2.5 tenths. What we can clearly see right away is that both the feed per tooth per minute and the spindle speed per minute are displayed immediately here. That wasn't present in the old view. It's not only displayed here, I can also work with it. So if I consider things more in terms of feed per tooth and RPM, instead of surface speed and feed per tooth, there is undoubtedly a significant advantage for me when compared to the old perspective. Let's say, so I won't change the feed per tooth to 2,984 anymore, but to 3,200, confirm it, then we see that the feed per tooth has changed accordingly. The same goes for the spindle speed. We could say, let's say 7,500 revolutions, then the surface speed up here changes accordingly as well. What else is new within this area? So let's say we've already developed quite a comprehensive cutting data set specifically tailored for the free cutting steel. And now I want to introduce a new material, namely ST37 steel. Theoretically, you would have to go and create a new material or add the ST37 material. For ST37, create roughing and finishing methods, fill in all cutting data, etc. We don't need to do that here anymore because in the new cutting data set, we can proceed as follows. I already have comparable cutting data, just like I do for my ST37. So here with the free cutting steel, I can now proceed by utilizing the three dots option to effortlessly clone and replicate the entire data set. I'll do that now. The system is now asking me which new part material I want to copy this into. And there, I select the ST37, confirm with OK. There we see. ST37 has now been added here as a new material and we also see the same cutting data sets as I have transferred from the free cutting steel. I could now start here by entering new cutting data or just adopt them as they are, or if I feel like it, modify them accordingly. Another option we have is, imagine I have a roughing data set specifically designed for the material free cutting steel, crafted to optimize the machining process for this specific type, ensuring efficiency and precision. And now, I would like to incorporate this cutting data set from free cutting steel roughing into the brass material as well. Then one might proceed by saying, all right, I'll develop a new method specifically for roughing in the brass material, then identify the appropriate roughing option and accurately input the necessary values. I'm not going to do that just yet, because what I'm stating is that I would like to take the cutting data set roughing from the free cutting steel and copy it to a different material by using the three points method. When I do this here, I now just select this brass, which I already have here. This one, confirm with OK. Then we can observe that this roughing process is now also present in the brass. Last but not least, we certainly don't want to just set up these cutting data purely so they look appealing. No, we're now going ahead and saying we're using all this information within Siemens and XCAM. I will now proceed to store and catalog the cutting data within the configuration of my base tool give up my writing rights, check again where the whole thing is installed. And there we have cross-reference within the GR again. Here once again, we can clearly observe this lengthy tool where the end mill is attached. I plan to make use of this assembly tool within NX now. Therefore, I click on the black arrow located here just once. And within NX, we can already see the tool appearing here. There it is already. Now I'll take one of the operations that are available, for example, here. The final milling process for this groove is presently carried out with a different tool. However, now I'll take hold of the operation and carefully transfer it into the new tool. Let's calculate the tool paths once. Here we have the new paths according to our new tool. However, what we also have right now are the cutting data from the old tool we used before. Now naturally, we need to incorporate the new cutting data properly. 
In the TMGR, I am moving forward by clicking the button located on the left side here, the one labeled as Technology, and I select it. Now the Technology Manager examines NX and verifies which operation is currently selected within it, Slot Finishing, and lists them here accordingly, Slot Finishing. He also shows me which tool is used for that, so with our end mill. He also shows me the part material that he has read from the workpiece. And he illustrates to me that for this particular tool and material, there is a feed per tooth of 0.16 and a surface speed of 220. So how do I get this cutting data into NX now? Relatively simple. I just click on Send data to NX. I'm getting a green bar here. This signifies period. The cutting data is now transferred, and once I click here, we'll notice how they've adjusted accordingly. Click, cutting data has been adjusted. So I can always assume that for all my tools, for all my materials, and all my methods, the cutting data is always correct. What happens if I haven't actually selected any operation within NX here? In that case, I'll proceed to refresh the list here once. Then we will actually see that the technology manager is now listing every single existing operation within NX Cam right here. We start with listing facing up, planning up, then front facing, front facing, and so on. We see the same behavior as just now with the single operation, meaning it lists the material for me, it lists the tool for me here, it also shows me the current value within NX on the right, but also the specified value from the database. And he goes through this entire process here for each and every single operation. If the list is too long for me, I have the option to switch to compact mode. Then he basically folds in all the columns and I have everything displayed nicely in a list here. If later I decide against transferring cutting data, clicking here will show green bars everywhere. And now I know that in every operation the incision data is perfect. That was our first look at the revamped cut data view in the technology manager. As we can see, a lot has changed. From a rather rigid display to a much more user-friendly view. We hope this update excites you as much as it does us and that it makes your workflow easier. Now I'm genuinely eager to discover how you liked this new video in the spotlight style. Was the video too long, too short? Let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, stay up to date by subscribing to our channel for more exciting content and insights into our product development. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Let's make it real. Janus Engineering.